So now let's take some time. Now we're going to take a look at how NURBS work in 3D. So first start by creating a 4 foot by 4 foot square and uh, then extruding that to 6 feet. Now switch to a bright asymmetric view and make sure that you're in OpenGL as your rendering mode. And take a minute to look at your OpenGL options. And set the detail to very high. This is just going to make sure that any 3D geometry that we draw is going to really fit to the profiles. It's not going to be approximating that with the low detail. And then go over to your 3D tool set and find the NURBS curve tool. So for this, we want to be in control point mode, the second one over, and change the degree to second degree. So start by clicking to the top left point, then the top center, the top right, the bottom right, the bottom center, the bottom left, and then we're going to close the shape back at the top left. All right, so now go and select the flyover tool and uh, orbit around the object, and you see that we've effectively taken this curve and we've wrapped it around our object. Right, and we, if we go to the selection tool and move that away, we can see that it's like a wire that we've taken and bent in three dimensions. All right, so that's, you know, kind of a fun brain exercise, but that really doesn't help us make shapes. That just kind of helps us make this curve in three dimensions. So uh, let's look at how to actually make surfaces from this object. So unlike with extrudes and sweeps, NURBS modeling is direct modeling. So it's destructive in a way. We don't get that original planar based geometry. We can directly manipulate things in three dimensions. So one thing we can do is combine these NURBS curves into NURBS surfaces. And there's a few ways we can do that. One is a menu command. So I'm just going to demonstrate what I have here. I have three NURBS curves that intersect at a point. So they're creating a closed network of curves. Right? They don't have to come to a single point. Sometimes it's easier if they do because then you know that you're actually crossing. And if we select all three of these, and we go to Model, 3D Power Pack, Create Surface from Curves. And here we have a NURBS surface. We'll talk about a little bit later what exactly a NURBS surface is, but now we have something that begins to look like a modeled object. So we can also select this single NURBS curve, this triangle, and model 3D power pack, create surface from curves. And here we have a NURB surface that kind of looks like a 3D polygon, but it is indeed NURBs. So the other thing we can do to create a surface is the loft tool. And that lets us take what we think of as a network of curves and connect them together. And we'll look at this together in a minute. So the loft tool is in the 3D tool set. And this has a few modes one that combines profiles together, and two that deal with rails. So here, we're just connecting the endpoints of this curve. And when we're done, we click this green check mark, or we can actually press the return key. And we get a dialog to create our loft. Now when Vectorworks creates the loft, it's actually really just doing a lot of mathematics to figure out how to combine all of these together. So sometimes when we go into this dialog and we hit preview, 
Vectorworks isn't going to be able to come up with a solution. But here we go. We've calculated a pretty good solution there. Uh, and now for future reference, I'm going to keep these curves. So essentially, I'm going to make a copy of all of those curves and keep that to do more operations later and hit OK. And when we're lofting curves, the order that we click actually makes a difference because we can say how we want these to combine together. So if we go back to the loft surface tool and I click on these endpoints in more of a zigzag kind of way, you'll see we got this little guideline here. And now when I preview that, you'll see that that surface kind of intersects with itself. The other thing that we can do with a loft is revolve. The other thing we can do with a loft is loft on a rail. And uh, we can actually use extrude along path with Vectorworks. So if we have a NURBS curve and we have another NURBS curve, we can always select both of them and go to model extrude along path. We're going to select the second one as our path here. And that shape is going to extend along the path of the NURBS curve. Now, just like before, if we want to say exactly how that aligns to the curve, we're going to have to go in and edit the profile and move that around. Um, with lofting with a rail, we can really do that in one step. Loft surface. And here, first, we're going to select the rail. And then if I want to align the rail to the top point in this star, and then OK. So now that object is moving along that rail curve in the shape of the star. Uh, the other thing to note is that when we have a path when we have a profile that is not aligned to the screen, we're actually going to maintain that alignment as we go along the curve. That's different from an extrude along path where we actually try to align that plane perfectly to the tip. So with a lofting with a rail, we can be a lot more specific. We can also do some more interesting things with lofting with a rail, and we'll get to that later. So uh, let's do some lofting together. OK, so to start our loft, we're going to make three squares. So first, just using the square tool, make a 6 inch by 6 inch square. OK, now copy and paste in place. So you should end up with two 6 inch squares right on top of each other. So with that pasted square still selected, go to Modify, Move, Move 3D. And we're going to move that in the z-axis 3 feet, or 36 inches. All right, so we want another square that's going to be on top of that. And we want to align them by center. So double click on the square tool. Enter the width and the height to 3 inches, and position it next click, and change that little widget so we're by center. And now we're perfectly aligned to the center there. And this one we're going to move up 18 inches. So modify, move, move 3D, and this is going to be 18 inches. OK, so now select all three of these squares and modify, convert, convert to NURBS. And you'll notice when we convert a whole bunch of things, that will be successful. However, we end up with a group of NURBS. And let's save ourselves the step of going into that and just go modify, ungroup. And we have our three NURBS curves. 
So let us combine these with a loft. So find the loft surface tool and we want to be in the first mode to deal with profile curves. And we just want to connect these together and as you're connecting them together be careful to click always on the same corner, right? So if you start on the right corner, keep consistently the right corner all the way through. And it really doesn't matter which one you do as long as it's consistently relating to each other. And when we're done, click the check mark. So there's a few options here that we can choose. So we're going to keep these curves because we're going to do a few different versions of this, so make sure that is checked. And if you want to double check what we've done, click preview. That looks pretty good, so okay. All right, so move this to the side. So this time, when we loft the object, we're going to go around in a spiral. So go to Loft Surface Tool, and on the bottom curve, select the bottom point, the one closest to us, then the right point, and then the back point, and check. All right, this time we're also going to create a solid. So check that option and click OK. Now you see we have this twisty shape. So in some ways it's a lot like a multiple extrude. Except when we did a multiple extrude we had no control over how one profile would connect to the next. We also really didn't have a control over how we intercepted each profile. Right? So here we would be doing something similar to a multiple extrude with the shape in the middle, but we can move that center profile up or down and we're going to exactly pass through that at any point we want. So often if you have a shape that is going to behave similar to a, a multiple extrude, this is going to give us a lot more control and be a, a, a much better object for us. And we can see now we've created, created a, a generic solid as opposed to a group of NURBS surfaces that we created before. So let's do this one more time. And go to your loft tool. And here, again, do three corresponding points. And check. And this time, check the ruled option. So a ruled curve is not going to make a NURBS curve through those points. It's not going to be even. It's going to go a straight line from point to point to point. So this is actually going to be almost identical to being a multiple extrude here. Okay, so let's look at some of the things we can do with lofting with a rail.